because there's not much time for the class these days, I'm going to go straight to the I'm going to just read the word once and go straight to the word meaning. I'm going straight to the word meaning. Now, never. Yatra. Om Jnana Timirandatya Jnana Anjana Shalakya Chakshir Minita Nina Dhatya Shri Bravi Dhamana. Actually, there was one more paragraph of Prabhupada's purport. I did to them so little time in the class in the... We didn't read it. Na Yatra Choko Na Jara Namrityo Narte Na Kotri Karate Kudarchet Kachet Chato Daha Kipaya Ninda Vedam Ranta Dutha Parapravani Darshana So... Shukadev Goswami in this verse is describing the position of Satya Loka. Satya Loka, as we explained yesterday, is also known as Brahma Loka because Lord Brahma resides on this planet. It is said in the Bhagavatam, Avan Manasa Gochara. That means that the Satya Loka cannot be described with our material attempt. This Satya Loka, the residence of Lord Brahma, it's almost as good as Vaikuntha. It's not Vaikuntha, but almost as good as Vaikuntha. And it is explained that this Satya Loka is approximately 1,870 1, million miles above the sun. And the Satya Loka is only Polka, 209 million miles below the Vaikuntha planet. Actually, from a material angle, 209 million miles when you hear, you say, oh, I can't even comprehend that part. But when you're talking about distances in the planetary system, this is nothing. So, in this verse, it is being explained that in Satya Loka, in Satya Loka, there is no serious misery or old age or death. Now, life in Satya Loka is definitely better than any of the material planets but a being elevated to Satya Loka is also not the ultimate solution or the ultimate goal. Because eventually all the planets do get destroyed. Now, in the purpose of this world, Prabhupada making many significant points that we would like to present to all of you. The first point that Prabhupada makes is that the Polish materialists do not take advantage of the knowledge that is revealed in the Vedic scriptures. We think that there are many academic scholars, many individuals are materially very, very qualified, but instead of accepting the Vedic teachings as they are, they use the Vedic teachings and give their own interpretation. Therefore, Krishna says, Nirmam Dospitana Mura Prabhupada Dinaradama Mayaya Partha Jnana Shra Bhava Nashutaha. That those, Mayaya Partha Jnana, this refers to those categories who are intellectually well equipped but they don't accept the supremacy of God. They use the word of God to give their own interpretation. Therefore, one should receive this Vedic knowledge as it is coming down to the disciplic succession. And if you send this knowledge to the disciplic succession as it is, then one will derive full benefit about the greatness of the Vedic knowledge, just like if one takes the medicine according to doctor's prescription. If we take the doctor's medicine according to the prescription, the medicine works, but if you dilute it, then it will not work. So in the purpose, Prabhupada also points out the history of the Bhagavad Gita. If we were to ask in this class how long, how when was the Bhagavad Gita spoken, most of you would answer it was spoken 5,000 years ago. But as Prabhupada says in the purpose, this knowledge was first given to the Sangha Vivaswa. This is revealed in the opening lines of the fourth chapter where Krishna gives the history of the Bhagavad Gita. So the understanding is that this knowledge was given by the Lord to Vivaswa. Vivaswa in turn gave it to Manu. And then Manu gave it to Ikshvaku. And Ikshvaku is the head of the dynasty in which Lord Ramachandra later on appeared. Ikshvaku is the, or the king of the early planet. And forefather of the Raghu dynasty, in which Lord Ramachandra later on appeared. So this knowledge was by Krishna Vivaswa, it was spoken over a hundred millions ago. But from Vivaswa to Mano, this knowledge was spoken at the beginning of Sveta Yuga. This point is revealed in the Mahabharata. In the Mahabharata it is said that on this earthly planet, 
This knowledge was spoken at the beginning of Treta Yuga. Therefore, it is roughly estimated that this knowledge is 2,500,000 years old on this earthly planet. You may want to know how we have come up to this figure of 2,500,000 because when you use this figure in your preaching, some people may question the source. So, Treta Yuga lasted for 1.2 million years. And Dwarpa Yuga lasted for 800,000 years. So 1.2 and 800,000 totals to 2 million. And 5,000 years of Kali Yuga have passed by. So on this earthly planet, please remember, we are not talking about the time when the Lord revealed this knowledge to Vivaswa. We are only talking about from the time that Vivaswa gave to Manu, the father of mankind. This knowledge is too many, this small knowledge is more than 2 million years old. Therefore, this knowledge is very, very ancient. And if we take advantage of an ancient philosophy, then one can free oneself from the misery of mature existence. Why was the Bhagavad Gita spoken? Why was the Vedic knowledge spoken? It was all spoken to relieve mankind of one misery. As long as you make a material arrangement, there will always be anxiety and misery. Therefore, one should receive this authentic knowledge to the proper source and practice it, then one will get full benefit. Why did Krishna? Krishna explained because in course of time the knowledge was lost. So in, re- in order to reestablish the true method, he had to speak this knowledge again to Arjuna. And why was Arjuna selected? Because he was an unloyed devotee and friend of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Arjuna was selected to be the recipient of this great philosophy. Therefore, Prabhupada says in one of the purposes of the Gita, it's just like Krishna had to speak the Bhagavad Gita again to establish a true meaning of the Gita. So similarly, Prabhupada has translated the Bhagavad Gita because most of the translations, the real meaning has been distorted. Hence, to present the true meaning of the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada had to retranslate, uh, had, Prabhupada had to present an authorized translation of the Gita. So in your preaching, when you tell the people that this knowledge is over two million years, then Prophet in the purpose also points out, qualified Brahmana is not on the basis of birth. Qualified Brahmana is on the basis of qualification. <laughs> Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Chatur Varna Maya system Guna Karma Vibhagatha. Guna, Guna means quality. According to one's quality, one becomes the Brahmin Shakti of Vaishya Sudra. So, Brahmana means you are trained by a bona fide spiritual master. In the principles of austerity, truthfulness, cleanliness, mercifulness. Brahmana must be trained in these four essential ingredients of religion. Therefore, a Vaishnava, actually a Vaishnava is even higher than a Brahman. All of you are trying to become Vaishnavas. We haven't become Vaishnavas, but we are trying to become Vaishnavas. By practicing the process of devotional service as it is coming down to the discipline profession, one can become a Brahmana. That's one and a Vaishnava. Vaishnava means one is working exclusively for the pleasure of the Lord. And one is also concerned about the unhappiness of others. Therefore, he engages in preaching work. So by following these rules and regulations that have been coming down through the discipline succession, one can advance on the spiritual path. In the purple that we did not read, Prabhupada makes the point that the Vedic literature enables us or teach us to establish a relationship with the Lord. Veda Shastra is the Manda Avitaya Paroja Parojana Purushada Shiromani Prema Mahadana. It is explained in the Chaitanya Chandamrita that the Vedic scriptures help us to understand our relationship with God and understanding and executing this philosophy is the highest wealth that one can cultivate in the human form of life. So the highest wealth in the human form of life is not the accumulation of material assets or the accumulation of material power. So all these things get destroyed with the passage of time. It's the accumulation of love of God. So from a mature perspective, your devotees may have no bank balance, and you may be traveling in metro into the military cars, but you devotees are the real millionaires of this country, because you are trying to develop love of God. This is the only wealth that travels with the individual. Therefore, as Prabhupada says in the purple, the materialists attempt to find happiness but not succeed, just like if somebody hopes to find water in the desert, it will not succeed. Therefore, we cultivate the spiritual knowledge and make people aware of the spiritual knowledge. 
That is exactly why Prabhupada pushed book distribution. That is why Lord Chaitanya pushed the beating effort. Because through these endeavors, the ignorance of mankind can be destroyed. And one can be reminded about his constitutional position. So, we are not even, the devotees are not even interested in going to any of the material planet. Even though Satya Loka is very near by Kunta Loka, it's the highest material planet, the devotees are not interested in going there. Nor are the devotees even interested in going to the spiritual planet. Then what are they interested in? Are they desireless? Yes, they are desireless. They consider desireless because with their thoughts, because their desires are consistent with those of the Lord. And because their desires are consistent with the Lord, they are, it is considered desireless. So, the devotee's desire is to please the Lord and to serve the Lord. So, in that regard, heaven and hell are both alike. The devotee only prays, My dear Lord, please just engage me in service and give me one benediction that I may never forget you. Because when you forget the Lord, that is the most unfortunate position to be in. So whether in hell or heaven, the body is absorbed in meditation on the Lord. And it is this meditation that enables one to advance towards you. So to summarize the verse, Shukadeva Goswami is describing in this verse the position of Satya Loka. And he described, actually the Satya Loka, as we said, is also known as Brahma Loka in other parts of the scriptures, because this is where Lord Brahma resides. And as I said, this, this Satya Loka is very near Vaikuntara planet. Only about 209 miles, million miles away. And uh, the inhabitants of the Satya Loka do lead a comfortable life. But the ultimate for goal is not Satya Loka. That is, the ultimate goal of the devotee is to serve the Lord without constraint where, the, where he's going to go. If Krishna wants, the devotee will go to hell. If he wants, he will even serve him in heaven. Wherever Krishna wants, the devotee is willing to serve. Hare Krishna. So I don't have time for questions. There's only one minute left. And... Uh, Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna